When you play Arena, do you ever feel overwhelmed by all of the information popping up on your screen all at once? Chances are you own it up in Battlegrounds, but the moment you enter Solo Shuffle or 3v3, everything just seems to fall apart. And suddenly, it feels like you can't do anything and every button you press feels either too slow or too panicked. It's like one of those dreams where you get into a fight, but you can't even move your arms and it just it feels totally unfair. But when all this happens, it seems impossible to know exactly what to improve since everything goes wrong all at once. But here's the truth. Most of these problems are caused by one single thing. In fact, this single problem is the biggest gatekeeper for players below challenger ratings. And today, we'll explain what it is, why it matters, and how to fix it. And while we're doing that, we'll explain some core PvP fundamentals from the ground up and teach you the essential steps you need to take to start breaking through the earliest rating barriers. Now let's start with a question. Would you rather play Arena with low latency on a $5,000 computer or on your grandma's Windows 8 laptop with dial-up internet? Let's pretend you chose grandma. What would happen when you tried to play WoW? Well, you would definitely lag and everything would feel terrible. Even if you tried to do some easy PvE content, your damage rotation would feel slow and you, you probably couldn't react to any mechanics. But then, if you went from grandma's computer to playing on a $5,000 machine, suddenly you'd feel like a beast. Those boss mechanics? They would feel like a complete joke. Your rotation? It would feel way more responsive. And once the lag goes away, everything? It's just a little bit easier, right? Well, here's the truth. This is probably what's happening to you if you're stuck below challenger ratings. Yes, the reason you're held back is due to latency, but not from your computer. Instead, it's lagging your ability to make decisions, which starts with the most frequent decision you have to make, your damage rotation. Just like your computer, you have to process a bunch of information all at once, and your rotation is part of that. And just like your PC, that means you have to pull resources away from other things. And in Arena, this means CC, interrupts, damage, you name it. Every millisecond you think about your rotation is lag that'll just pile up, and over time, it'll make everything you do automatically slower. Confusing? Well, think about it. How many times during an Arena game do you actually look at your bars to find the next damage spell to press? Taking half a second every now and then to check out your cooldowns is totally fine since you need to know when your burst, defensives, and crowd control are ready. Even pro players do this. But if you're taking half a second every GCD to decide your next spell, that'll eventually compound into minutes of wasted time during a single arena game. Think about how fast the game is right now. It's not crazy to say that a half a second can make the difference between living or not. So if your attention is divided between looking at your bars, thinking about your rotation, and understanding what's happening in the game, your reaction time, and game understanding will be compromised. That's why Arena can feel so chaotic at ratings lower than Challenger. Instead of thinking about CC, interrupts, and cooldowns, half of the resources are spent thinking about what damage global to press next. If you're looking at your bars to do your rotation, it's like you're playing half the game blindfolded. And unfortunately, you can't easily upgrade your brain. Well, as far as we know. Instead, your goal should be to make your rotation take the least amount of resources possible and set your rotation to autopilot. This means developing muscle memory so that your damage feels as automatic as possible. To do this, we need to think about the core of how damage is dealt in World of Warcraft more generally. Now, note that this is different for each class, and going into details for every specialization would make this video longer than a Lord of the Rings film. Instead, we'll stick to the concepts shared between every DPS, which are 1. Understanding builders and spenders, and 2. Using that information to maximize your sustained damage and your burst. First off, almost every spec will have spells that generate a resource that activates stronger abilities. For example, Rogues have combo points, and Retribution Paladins have Holy Power. The abilities that generate these resources are called Builders, and the stronger abilities that consume these resources are called Spenders. 
For the most part, you should try to avoid looking at your builders on your action bar, since they're typically either spammable or have a really short cooldown or have no resource requirement. You won't gain much by constantly looking there. On top of this, you need to be efficient with how you manage builders and spenders. If you press a builder while having your spender resources at maximum, then that'll be an inefficient global that'll contribute to DPS loss and an overall lack of pressure. Because of this, you want to occasionally glance at your resources to see when a spender can be used, but you should avoid overdoing this since this can easily compound into wasted time over the course of a longer game. The end goal when doing all of this is to maximize sustained damage, which is how we sequence our rotation while not bursting. This directly correlates with the amount of constant pressure we can output, making it a key win condition by draining enemy defensives to eventually secure kills. If we do a good job with maximizing our sustained damage, that gives our burst a higher chance at actually scoring a kill. But here we have another place where people routinely make mistakes, because just like sustained damage, your burst sequence also needs to follow certain rules. The most important one being to make sure your damage is front-loaded. This means making sure that when you press your main offensive cooldown, you can instantly deal the highest amount of damage in the shortest window of time. This means using as many resource spenders as quickly as you can, which requires you to do some preparation. One clear example is Balance Druid, where the strength of incarnation depends on how much astral power is available once the ability is pressed. Ideally, Boomkins want to dump as many star surges as they can the moment Incarn is pressed because that's guaranteed to do the highest possible DPS. This concept applies to every single DPS spec. The last thing you want to do is pop your major offensive and waste precious seconds of your main win condition using builders or getting resources that you could have instead just generated beforehand. In fact, the golden rule here is to maximize your burst potential by gathering resources, buffs, and ramping everything up in advance. And by the time you actually activate your offensive cooldown, your goal is to instantly use your hardest hitting abilities and deal the most front-loaded damage possible. Again, the Builder Spender system applies to almost every DPS spec in WoW. It's how damage rotations work in PvE and PvP. And just like PvE, your ability to climb in Arena depends on how confident you are in your rotation, since it means you focus on the more important things like CC, interrupts, and cooldowns. This is a problem when you consider damage as one of the key separation points between rating brackets, with higher rated players doing around 20% more DPS on average across every spec. This is why damage is at the center of all of our class courses over at skillcap.com. These guides teach you the same DPS rotations being used by the highest rated players, including some min-maxing tips in our Master and Minutes videos which teach you some advanced techniques that would otherwise take countless arena games to learn. Our guides are proven to produce results, which is how we're able to offer a guarantee that you'll gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So, if you want access to the best resources for learning WoW PvP, be sure to check out skillcap.com after this video. Anyway, now it's time to work on making your damage rotation feel automatic. Remember, the true advantage of having your DPS rotation on autopilot is that you can focus on more important game-winning things, like having faster reaction time, landing interrupts, crowd control, and spotting win conditions. You can't do any of these things. <laughs> Well, if you're thinking about what damage button to press next. After fully understanding your rotation, all you have to do now is practice non-stop. And the best part is that you can do so on literally any WoW content. Usually when you're trying to get good at FPS games, you can practice in a lot of different levels of controlled environments. This includes shooting out bots in practice rooms, moving on to death matches, playing casual games, and finally ending up in competitive matches. For WoW, it's no different. If you're looking for a completely controlled environment with no external factors, you could use a target dummy with the details add-on to track your DPS and refine your rotation. Alternatively, if you want to challenge yourself a bit more, you can start practicing in battlegrounds, skirmishes, or even going into PvE content, as they'll add additional layers of information and events that demand your attention, like boss mechanics or battleground objectives. Finally, the closest thing we have to a casual game in WoW PvP is the 2's bracket, especially when played in combination with a healer. 
This is our biggest recommendation for players who want to seriously improve. One mistake we see constantly is players trying to learn PvP by playing double DPS comps in 2v2. The problem with this is that without a healer, you don't have the breathing room to really slow down and develop muscle memory gradually. Instead, by playing with a healer in 2v2, you can understand core parts of WoW PvP while still having to deal with less chaos. The biggest advantage of 2s is that you'll have to learn how to identify kill windows on your own and start combining interrupts and crowd control with your damage, a key fundamental for climbing in other brackets, especially solo shuffle. While damage is at the core of improving at PvP, it comes with some accessories that make it even better. The first being loadout. Every day on the forums, there's at least one casual PvEer who thinks PvP sucks because of how quickly everyone dies. Well, that's to be expected because people don't really understand how impactful gear really is. You can't take a PvE loadout and expect to do well in PvP. Unfortunately, you will be severely handicapped if you try to grind arena rating without the right gear, tier sets, and the double PvP trinket bonus. We highly recommend at least 24% versatility or higher to start off ranked games. So before anything else, head straight to some battlegrounds and farm yourself at least a complete honor set. And don't worry, with the quality of life improvements that WoW has, you'll be able to do this in no time. You don't have to upgrade your items anymore, and less than one cap of honor is enough to be fully geared. And aside from gear, another mistake players tend to make is trying out crazy talent builds or copying a good one without understanding really how it works. And we know it can be tedious to play the same mainstream build over and over, but... When you're trying to improve, you want to minimize any variation that can negatively impact your gameplay. Finding your ideal build, optimal stats, gear enchantments, and talents should be one of your priorities since it keeps everything standard and helps you accurately diagnose any problems. Don't be sad though, we know that some of those experimental builds can be fun. We're looking at you, Elemental Shamans playing with your gimmicky Stormkeeper one-shot build. But overall, there is a reason why top players have pretty standardized builds. It's because they're consistent and leave nothing up to chance, allowing them to pinpoint any issues with more precision. Part of having a good loadout also includes being a bit more selective with the comps you decide to play. Yes, the comp you play actually matters. More often than not, people settle on playing sub-optimal compositions either because it's faster to find through LFG, or because they lack knowledge of the meta, or they're just playing with friends. There's nothing wrong with playing a fun comp, but remember the golden rule. When your goal is to improve, the last thing you want is to be unsure if you lost because of a misplay, or if you straight up got out comped. Because of this, we recommend avoiding anti-synergistic 3 setups, and to avoid playing double DPS in 2s. As much as you possibly can, try and play a meta comp. Now, for some people, this is a big pill to swallow, since everyone on the forums loves to complain about flavor of the month when it comes to comps that have existed for almost two decades. The truth is that playing a strong comp in 3v3, and especially in 2v2, will help standardize everything else and will allow you to understand how to use synergies between other classes. As we mentioned, this includes playing with a healer in 2v2 as a DPS in order to more accurately practice cooldown trades, reactive gameplay, and learning how to land kills on your own. This is very important knowledge for understanding win conditions, and within no time, you'll be ready for the big and more chaotic leagues like Solo Shuffle and 3v3. You can play off meta comps and have fun, for sure, but if you want to improve, you should focus on playing good comps first so that you can become good enough to play weaker comps and make them actually work. If Arena feels overwhelming and you feel like you can't possibly master its mechanics, it might be because of damage. And this is what makes WoW PvP so hard, that there's never an obvious answer, and sometimes the biggest obstacle is right in front of you the whole time. Rank 1 streamers sometimes make WoW seem easy, but that's because they've been playing the game for so long. With enough practice, sure, WoW can be easy, but sometimes it just takes a really long time. Skillcapped was designed with this in mind, condensing years of expert knowledge into easy-to-follow guides. Our mission has always been the same, to make sure you get better at a pace you didn't think was even possible. 
This is why we're able to offer a rating gain guarantee when you use the guides at skillcap.com. They're designed and proven to make you a smarter player capable of achieving your goals. With courses for every class and a money back guarantee, check out the links to get started today. Anyway, guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know how we did in the comments below and tell us if you would like us to continue this series in the comments below as well. As always, we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.